Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast, your go-to source for personal, professional, and organizational growth and development. We hope you tune in often for all things people management, organizational development and change, organizational leadership, and social impact related. Maximize your personal and organizational potential with Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. In this HCI podcast episode, I talk with Alan Bubich about how to build an employee referral machine that attracts top talent. Alan Bubich, welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. It's great to have you here. I'm uh, so excited to have the chance to chat with you. And it was fun talking in the pre-interview, just as we were talking shop a little bit, getting to know you a little bit more. uh, And I'm really looking forward to having the chance to have a great discussion with you today. Today, we're going to be talking about building an employee referral machine to attract top talent, specifically looking at the power of recognition of our employees, how to incentivize and motivate employees, and doing all of that through social media. And I know that's really your background, your core expertise area, and I think you'll be able to add a lot of insight and value to the listeners who who largely aren't uh, social media experts. They're organizational leaders, HR people, um, trying to figure out how to do their jobs more effectively. So I think the angle that you will come at this from will be very, very helpful. As we get started, I just wanted to share Alan's bio with everybody. Alan is the founder of Social Horsepower. With over 10 years of working in the social media marketing industry, he is highly skilled in search engine optimization, Oracle database, PHP, MVC, and Scrum. And I don't even know what all those things are, but that sounds really interesting. Uh, Alan and his team have saved customers like Accenture, Highmark, Lenovo, Mitsubishi, Samsung, and more. His very successful social media projects have sent a combined 25 million plus posts to Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Uh, Very, very uh, interesting Great background. It looks like uh, your your company is doing some great things. So thank you so much for joining me today. And uh, I look forward to this great discussion. As we get started and before we really launch into the conversation, anything else you would like to share by way of personal background, personal context uh, to help our listeners understand a little bit more about you? Yeah, no, I mean, thank you for that warm welcome, Jonathan. Um, obviously, um, Really appreciate the opportunity to be on the show and 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 chat with you and learn more about HR. So, as you've mentioned, our my background is in in social media, and uh, not only do I own Social Horsepower, which is a, a an employee advocacy tool, but I also happen to be the founder at City Blast, where we've helped over three thousand real estate agents and mortgage professionals manage their Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. So. Um, in terms of having an understanding of how social media works at the most granular level, uh, I've been doing this for a long, long, long time, over a decade. Uh, and as you mentioned, we've served Accenture, Highmark, Lenovo, Mitsubishi, Ream, Samsung. Um, we've had a lot of high profile clients and we've had clients all the way down to, you know, mom and pop shop, real estate agent, you know, one person with a, a tile kind of hung out in front of their main street store. So, We've really run the whole gambit and had a lot of opportunity from a grassroots level and like a front row to see how social media works. So uh, full disclosure, I'm not a human resource expert, but uh, definitely that's where I'm going to lean on you in today's conversation to uh, learn more about that side of the business. Excellent. And, and like I said, I'm, I'm not a social media expert. So I think we're a good uh, complimentary pair here as we try to explore this together. And I really love the idea and just the, the way you frame your business and this, this HR aspect of your business in terms of building an employee referral machine and leveraging social media to do that. So why don't we start there? And if you could tell me a little bit more about what you mean by that, and then we can start to dissect it and dive in a little bit more specifically. Yeah, it's a, it's a great segue. Um, 
So we've been having a, quite a few clients who have been coming to us to help them build their referral process. Um, and we've learned a lot about that. And even as, you know, I'm a software developer by trade. So um, learning about how important human capital is to your business was pretty eye-opening for me, especially someone who deals with ones and zeros, which is, which is what I do. So having to go and completely turn around to, you know, these soft um, uh, skills was a, was a massive change for me and a big eye-opener. And I didn't realize how important employees are to your company. And, and I think the real, you know, aha moment for me as a software developer was, and it's probably going to sound like a silly story, but I went to Red Lobster and had a really terrible experience. <laughs> And I, I'm like, I'm never going back. And afterwards, I was thinking about it. And I'm like, well, the food was exactly the same. Nothing changed with the food. The meal, in fact, was quite good. And I'm like, well, why would I never go back to Red Lobster? And that was my eureka moment. The eureka moment was the experience with the waiter was horrible. And, you know, that's when we started digging into employer branding. And what I found, and I'm sure you, you probably know this better than I do, the conversations and the experiences that you have with your with the employees of that company is the brand. That's actually how you feel and think about that particular brand. Unless you know, unless you're all the way down the line at a consumer commodity. Um, but for the most part, if you're in a B two B or in a B two C with a higher price ticket, the way that the employees treat you and the way you would treat the employees in those interactions is how you feel about the company. So. I, I know that probably sounds silly, but that was my eureka moment in realizing what the employees actually do mean to your bottom line um, from top to bottom. So I don't know if you've ever had a, a similar experience, but uh, um, that was my aha moment. And then, you know, as a follow up to that, um, we started using our tool, which we've been traditionally using for sales processes, we had a lot more of our, of our customers who are like, hey, we understand that we're using this on the sales side, but we're trying to fill roles. We're trying to get um, those roles filled faster. We're trying to get those roles filled by people who look like the employees that we already have. And we ended up you know, working with a bunch of our customers to come up with a, a, a system to attract and refer top talent. And it's pretty straightforward three-step process. The first one starting with, you know, my Red Lobster story, which is just recognizing the power of your employees um, and understanding what they mean to your business. The second one is incentivizing and motivating those people uh, to do something. And the third one is leveraging social media. And I'll touch on that third one, and I'm sure we're going to come back. But again, my two eureka moments, uh, one is leveraging the social media and two is understanding that this is even important. But uh, you know, I think about my father's generation. My father worked for General Motors for 35, 40 plus years. And then I think about our generation, Jonathan, the probability that someone, or even think about millennials, that they're going to spend 40 years in the same job and the concept of, of, of job loyalty, that stuff's out the window. Like that just doesn't exist anymore. And uh, leveraging social media to attract these folks help explain to uh, millennials or, or anyone else in, you know, in that either side of that um, uh, borderline, what your company offers them uh, is going to be a game changer. It's going to differentiate who you are as a company. It's going to help you with your hiring process and it's going to reduce hiring friction. Um, so, so, so I have to say uh, right from the get go, I know you, you frame yourself as a social media guy who doesn't know anything about HR but you, uh, you were just talking HR pretty well right there. <laughs> um, you, did a, you did a good job describing why it's so important, uh, why, we really <laughs> right? need, why we really need to, to make sure that we're understanding the value of our people. Uh, and the very name of this podcast, the Human Capital Innovations Podcast, is the whole idea is that we want um, to recognize the, the potential of our people, understand that they're the, the most important asset to the organization, uh, and then we want to innovate and use creative ways to attract and retain the very best people. That's really the whole point. And, and that's what you were just describing uh, in, in slightly different words, but, but ultimately you were saying the same thing, that, uh, that it is the employees that are the customer face of the organization. So when you had that bad experience at Red Lobster, it didn't even matter what their product or service was, right? 
because the way you interfaced with the frontline employee was so negative that you don't want to go back. I've definitely had similar experiences and that's why customer service is so important. Um, and there's so many studies uh, that have, have shown the connection between um, happy, engaged employees and satisfied and loyal customers. So if we don't have good at people, and it doesn't matter how good the food is, if you don't have good people who are then interfacing in positive ways with the customers, you're going to lose business and you're going to have a really hard time creating brand loyalty uh, around, you know, whatever you're doing, whether it's food or tech or, you know, whatever. And so, you know, that, that example, you framed it as a silly one, but it's, it's an apt one. It's, it's a, it's, it's one that I think everyone can, uh, can connect with and understand because we've all had that experience in the past. And so the question then for leaders when they're thinking about that is, okay, if we know the damage that one bad waiter can have for a whole restaurant chain, uh, and and the 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 damage towards the 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 brand, the damage uh, that can be done towards the the customer experience. Then, how are we going to prioritize the human capital component of our business to make sure that our product or service, whatever it is, meets the end of the row and actually will have the impact that we want to have? And interestingly, too, I mean, I, I'm a big advocate, of course, for, for uh, healthy organizations that produce really great stuff that, that consumers will be able to enjoy. Um, but the truth is, like, you can have kind of subpar stuff. You can have subpar products and services if you have great br brand ambassadors that interface with the customer, right? Um, so it doesn't go both ways. But you can have great stuff and really crappy um, customer interface with your frontline employees, and then you're, you're not going to be able to do anything. Um, so uh, certainly we want both, right? We want great products and services that are cutting edge, that, that will ultimately um, differentiate ourselves in the marketplace and add tremendous value, but we have to have the people that will uh, connect with the customers, and we need to recognize that additionally the people are the ones that are going to be creating the products and services. They're the ones that are going to be innovating and, and ultimately creating value for the marketplace. So I, you know, I, I cut you, I cut you off, but I did want to, to uh, just uh, reassure you that I feel like you're doing a good job of talking shop in terms of HR and speaking the language. I think listeners will, will resonate with the way you're framing this. Perfect. Well, that's fantastic. So just to, since the since the red lobster uh, analogy is working, uh, let's keep that going with that. So, you know, in the same way that red lobster is interfacing, the waiters interfacing with your customers, your employees have an opportunity to interface with other people who look like them on LinkedIn, on Facebook, uh, and so on and so forth. And you know, if you want to talk about what's the business ROI of referrals, you know. I can quote a quick stat from Career Builder, uh, which is that 82% of employers rate, re, rated referrals as the absolute best return for generating um, uh, qualified candidates. So if you want to get a great return on hiring people that look like the great employees that you have, the best way to do that is to turn to the great employees that you have uh, and ask them to go and find more people like them. And, you know, if you're going to create an, uh, an employee referral program and, and pay for that, um, and I don't, I think it's something like 90% of companies have a referral program in place already. But some of the other benefits that I've, I've learned about since I've kind of dived down the rabbit hole is that uh, according to HR technologist, you're going to hire at a 55% faster rate when you use employee referrals. And traditional hiring methods take between 55 days to 60 days from start to finish. And on average, you're going to hire someone in 29 days if they come in through a referral. So I'll go through some of the other stats really quickly because I know we're, we're, we've got uh, limited time um, and I want to respect, uh, you know, some of the people that you'll have that are, <laughs> you know, vice presidents and stuff. So you're going to not only hire faster, you're going to reduce your costs by an average of $3,000 or more per hire. And that's from recruiter.com. You are going to reduce your turnover, which makes a lot of sense because when you hire someone through someone, you know, there's that intrinsic vibe that, you know, I can't screw my buddy, Johnny, who just got me this job. I don't want to make him look bad. So 
you're going to have better job satisfaction, lower turnover. Um, you're going to be able to hire better applicants. So according to Dr. John Sullivan and his research, he says uh, 88% of employers said uh, referrals were their above number one best source for above average applicants. And um, last but not least, First Bird is saying that employees who were hired through a referral program produce 25% more profit for their companies than you hired, hired through other sources. So if you want to hire better candidates in a shorter period of time for less money that stay longer and are more profitable, <laughs> employer <laughs> referrals are the way to go. If other than that, it doesn't, it's not good for anything <laughs> other than those things. So, um, you know, other than all the return on investment and, uh, productivity and engagement, uh, statistics. Yeah, absolutely. So there's no question that, um, that the business case for employee referrals and having an effective employee referral system is incredibly strong. Um, now that's not to say that every last hire is going to be through employee referral, right? That's not what you're saying, but you're suggesting no. that, you know, there, there, it can be an important part of the mix and ultimately, particularly for, you know, middle level and down types of roles and positions within organizations, it should be a, a huge part of the mix, right? And it can bring so many benefits. So organizations, leaders need to carefully consider. So then the question I think I have is, well, if we, if we are on the same page about the business case and we understand the ROI, uh, we recognize it's valuable. So what, wh how is social media going to be what's going to bring it home for us? How is that going to be the answer to help us build this referral machine that's going to help us uh, attract and retain the best people? Well, it's, it's pretty simple. It's, you know, you want to fish where the fish are. <laughs> so it's not, uh, it's not complicated. The, the challenge is, the challenge is several fold. One is in most cases, employees aren't even aware that the program exists. Um, the second challenge is we call it the, the scare meeting. Uh, a lot of companies have this scare meeting where they will roll out their social media policy to their team and say, you can't say this, you can't say that, you can't say the other thing. People get scared that they're going to lose their jobs, so they say nothing. <laughs> um, and the third thing is, you know, again, not knowing what to say. So those are kind of the three gaps uh, and bridges that we see. And and I guess the fourth one is a, kind of a lack of communication of what jobs are even uh, are even open. Um, so one, making sure that your employees are aware of the program, making sure they're understanding what job opportunities there are helping them understand what they can and can't say on social, but in a way that's, you know, not frightening. Um, the second one is communicating uh, their incentives and rewards that are available to them if they do decide to participate uh, in the program so that that's kind of clearly laid out. There's no, you know, ambiguity around what is and isn't there. And then for me, um, my last key uh, concept is just proving how easy it is to do it and, and profit from it. Um, from an employee level. And I don't mean, when I say profit, I don't just mean the actual dollars and cents because there is a massive um, correlation between not only the person who's being referred as being uh, you know, a, a brand ambassador and, and becoming a, a better part of the company culture, but the person who does the referring, actually there's all kinds of studies that prove that the person who did the referral actually ends up kind of, you know, for lack of a better word, drinking the Kool-Aid, company Kool-Aid, you know, I apologize for using that because that sounds derogatory, but it's not supposed to be. But by, by virtue, you know, it's kind of like well, gift giving. Well, you mean they, they're buying in, they, they buy into in. the mission and the purpose, right? Yeah, sorry. So it's kind of like gift giving, you know, the person who gives the gift actually feels better about it than, than the person receiving it. So um, yeah, so profiting as a company and, and getting people to buy into the company culture, it's a nice two way street. Uh, and having that ability to communicate that to your team uh, and making it easy to do is those are the keys to being successful at doing this on social media, in my opinion. So walk me through real quick and, and for the listeners, walk us through um, kind of the logistics of what this could look like. So, you know, if we wanted to use your organization to help us with the social media campaign that will help us to create this employee referral machine, what does that look like? Yeah. So, I mean, and again, they don't have to use our tool. You can, you can certainly do this uh, manually or, and, and we're not the only 
you know, trick in town. So um, we happen to be the best one. <laughs> um, but basically, my, in my opinion, what ends up happening is there's two real keys to social media success, irrespective of what your actual uh, social media goal is. And those two things are time and consistency. And what ends up happening is, uh, and, we, and we preach this at City Blast to our 3,000 real estate members, um, you know, because we're an outsourced social media product for them. They, well, they say, well, why don't I do it myself? Well, you don't do it yourself because nine it sounds like a great idea today, but nine months from now, you're going to forget to post. And you're not posting consistently. And so what we see with, with companies is they say, we're going to start an employee referral program. And the first three weeks of the ERP are amazing, right? Everyone's holding hands or everyone's singing Kumbaya. Everybody's sharing the social. But the problem is it's not a core competency and it's not a core KPI of their job. They don't get paid more if they post more frequently about, you know, employer branding, uh, about job openings. So there's no success metric around their job. So of course it's going to fall off the radar for them because it's just not a key component of their job. So in my humble opinion, yeah, you can do this manually. It can be done with certain organizations, smaller organizations, but I think it's really tough to get time and consistency. So my suggestion always in this circumstance is to leverage a tool. You know what I mean? You wouldn't, you know, you can do a spreadsheet by hand, but everyone on this calls on Excel or the Google Sheets. So um, that's kind of what we do. We help put someone who's accountable for the long-term consistent success of your ERP solution and your employer branding program. Um, we allow you to gather the content and the job openings that you currently have, centralize that, and then our system allows you to stage that content on behalf of your employees consistently over time. So, um, of course, like I said, there's other tools in the market that do it. Uh, I think we, we've got a unique scenario in that we let you stage that content on behalf of the employees, which I think is, is the most powerful aspect of it. Um, but again, by having a tool, you can help to share this across everyone's uh, uh, Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. And again, what a tool that lets you do is, uh, like ours, is centralize the statistical reporting. So now you can see what content that I've put out in terms of employer branding was the most successful. You know, do people want to know about our after work activities? Do people want to know about our charitable uh, foundation and, and the kind of charitable works that we're doing? Um, what kind of information do future prospects who are considering our company, you can look at the content that you've produced that's been shared across these channels by your employees and see what's attracting uh, the most applicants. And we've got a full 360 integration with Workday, eRecruiter, Greenhouse. So not only can you see what content is producing the most results, but you can see which employees are driving the most applicants through a system like ours. So having uh, the ability to uh, systematize this, I think, is probably the, the key factor to long-term success with employee referrals. I'm excited to announce the publication of my new book from HCI Press, The Alchemy of Truly Remarkable Leadership. Ordinary, everyday actions that produce extraordinary results. Consider how the nature of work has shifted over the past 50 years. With increased globalization, rapid technological advancement, and the shift in economic composition, the average job of today looks very different than the average job of 50 years ago. What will the jobs and organizations of tomorrow look like? Moreover, what does this all mean for organizational leaders? What are the core competencies and capabilities of organizations and their leadership that are prepared for continued disruption and geopolitical and socioeconomic shifts? Regardless of what the future holds, increasingly, leaders need to be socially minded, data-driven, decisive, champions of talent, and disruptors of the traditional notions of leadership, teams, organizations, and work. The alchemy of truly remarkable leadership will help you to explore your own leadership competencies and capabilities and consider ways to apply and implement them into your workplace and personal life. Yeah, well, thank you. I appreciate that uh, explanation. And that's certainly been my experience, you know, as I, as I do um, uh, consulting work 
and, and run my shop on the side of kind of my own full-time gig, I recognize that one, I don't have the expertise around social media that I probably would need to have to be truly successful. Two, I just don't have the time or the attention to give to it consistently over time. So there's fits and starts, right? And, and, and spurts, but it's not consistent. And my understanding is consistency is pretty darn important when it comes to having a uh, broad social media impact. And then the analytics side, I think is so vital. Uh, targeted um, social media blasts and then measuring everything and understanding the impact will allow you to better uh, target uh, your ads, target your approach and refine it over time. So uh, I'm all for this idea of systematizing it and making sure that we're consistent over time. And like you were saying, you know, throughout the conversation today, uh, recognizing the value of employee referrals to the health and the success of your organization uh, is super important. And we, because not only does it bring in people that know somebody who can kind of be their social support within the organization as a new employee, it reinforces the commitment of the employee making the referral to the organization, and it signals to everyone in the organization that you value your people and there's going to be opportunities both for them to move uh, in and up within the organization, but also for people that they care about, their friends, their family to do the same. Uh, it's, it's really a win-win-win kind of a scenario um, if we can leverage it correctly. And my experience has been that a lot of organizations see the value, they understand the business case and the ROI, but they just don't have it systematized and to your point about the the KPIs if it's not measured and if, if no one's held accountable to it ultimately it's just not going to get done one of the other interesting things that we're seeing right now as well and, and again I I'm not an HR expert so and I've never done anything at this kind of level is one of our clients Fleet Corps uh, and they've got about 8,000 employees they are a um, logistics financier um, they have made a bunch of acquisitions and they're rolling up these companies with disparate names, disparate employees into kind of one behemoth mothership. And the way I'm watching them use it, employer branding is a completely different animal. So yes, they're using the employee referral program system that we've helped them kind of build out. But what they're doing is now, you know, they make an acquisition and you go from being company X that's in Brazil with a, your own name uh, and they immediately kind of bring these folks into our, our system and start to rebrand those employees um, with the Fleet Corps brand. So um, we've definitely seen it in mergers and acquisitions. We've definitely seen it in other kind of employer branding situations, not just on the employee referral side. So again, you've been at this a lot longer than I have been. So, um, you know, I don't know if you've seen experiences where you've seen change management like that or um, mergers, acquisitions, where, you know, getting a unified brand language in front of people has been important? Yes. So certainly it's, it's always important. And very often it fails miserably, <laughs> frankly. So <laughs> lots, of, lots of mergers and acquisitions. Um, you know, there's a variety of motives behind why companies go about that process. Um, but ultimately, at the end of the day, if, if your intention is to acquire or merge with another organization and not just take their, their client base, not just take some of their intellectual capital, but like really utilize their, their people as well. If that's the intention, then you have to create some sort of a cohesive um, employee brand and experience and you have to help existing people to connect with and buy into the, the parent companies you know, culture and mission and, and new ways of doing things because policies and practices are going to shift now that you have different owners and doing that successfully is very, very difficult. Most organizations don't do it successfully. Um, and, and so you end up just having lots of extra headaches. And unfortunately what often happens is you have a merger or an acquisition occur, and then you just have massive exodus of, of people within those organizations um, that for whatever reason, you know, they, they end up not wanting to stick it out with the new ownership. They don't buy into the, the mission or the values of the parent organization. Um, you know, there's a, there's a whole huge variety of reasons why people might leave. But, you know, if, if your goal is to acquire an organization and their talent, and then you have a, a, a huge 
proportion of, of that talent end up leaving, um, then, then you're not accomplishing what you would hope to accomplish. So, so organizations definitely need to be thoughtful about that. Let me ask you this question since you're, you're the expert and I'm, I'm the good looks on this call. Um, I know that, uh, we're seeing an uptick. We've seen a 2,700% uptick on engagement and production of LinkedIn content. So as we all know, everyone's on lockdown. The world is, you know, sales conferences, webinars, uh, belly to belly sales, all that stuff's been moved to LinkedIn and, and the traffic numbers back that. So from our experience, you know, we're seeing a ton of, of traction on sales teams coming to us for help. How important has social media become to the HR process? Because that's kind of opaque to me. Obviously, I, I know the sales world intimately. I know the social media world. Um, you know, is this on the radar for HR teams? Is this becoming more important? Um, you know, because I know even as short as five years ago, maybe it wasn't, wasn't there yet. Uh, has that changed? What's your, what's your perception on that? Yeah, good question. And it is changing. Um, and it really depends on the organization, the industry, and the sophistication, I think, of the HR um, function within a particular organization. Uh, certainly, the field of HR and HR and practice kind of on the cutting edge is absolutely going to be utilizing everything that we're talking about. And they're going to definitely understand and recognize the need to utilize social media to support their functions and uh, the analytics side. Um, so as we, as we project into the future another five years and just look at the future of work and technological disruption, how that's impacting a whole variety of, of uh, industries and jobs and professions, um, certainly within HR, we're seeing that. So, uh, you know, I don't want to to speak in too broad of brush, uh, brush strokes or, you know, over generalizations, but you know, there's, there's a lot of people in HR functions that may be a little bit behind the eight ball in terms of adoption of technology utilization, you know, these new tools and figuring out how to help them really help their business. Um, but as a general field, as a general um, a functional area within organizations, and particularly the more sophisticated HR um, uh, leaders are, are utilizing this and understand the, the importance of it. Do, would these HR leaders, would they be liaisoning with their social media team on, on a product like this or a project like this where they're saying, hey, we want to make employer branding and we want to, you know, make employee referrals and gathering applicants through via social media. We want to make that a priority. Is that something they would be working on on their own? Is that something they would be working on in conjunction with their social media teams? How would you see some of these larger companies? How would you see a rollout like that happening in your mind? I, I, well, it happens both, both of those ways. Sometimes they're doing it on their own. That's obviously not going to be as effective. Sometimes, um, you know, it, it's, they're really not doing much of anything structured, uh, but they're, they're encouraging, you know, hiring managers in, in various departments or functional areas across the organization to, to uh, share things and post on social media when there's job openings and such. Now, the, the, the best approach is going to be when there's a well-coordinated system in place that uh, can be utilized consistently to make sure that the message is getting out. Uh, and I think the, the best organizations are doing that. Um, so you have the HR people uh, interfacing with the social media marketing people, uh, interfacing with individual hiring managers and uh, managerial uh, leads in different functional areas of the organization to make sure that this is happening in you know a cohesive manner. Yeah, the uh, it's funny because the analogy I always use when I'm when I'm chatting with folks is the town hall meeting where you know you say hey everybody someone's been leaving their dishes in the sink. Can we all make sure that we're putting our dishes uh, in the dishwasher? Oh, and P.S. by the way, pretty please, can you share this, uh, you know, executive job opening that we have to your social media team? And uh, one of the things I can always guarantee you is every town hall meeting, you're going to be having those two conversations. You know, one is clean out the fridge and two is can you please share on my behalf? So we've seen, we've even chatted with folks who are like, we send out an email, we send it around an email asking people to, to share and, you know, any system, any, any project, anything that you're working on, that's going to fall down um, when it's, it's not a system. Uh, and when everybody's responsible, no one's accountable. Uh, I'm sure we've all heard that saying before. And that's kind of another challenge with social media because the social media promise is that it's about people. 
And, you know, ask yourself, when was the last time I had a meaningful interaction with the Unilever homepage on Facebook? <laughs> the answer is never, right? You know, you want to be talking to Betty. You want to see three photos of her dogs, what are, how her kids are doing. And then that fourth or fifth item should be, hey, I'm Betty. Here's what I'm doing at work. Here's why my job is meaningful. Here's why I love working here. And here's why you should be interested too. And that's why I'm a firm disbeliever in corporate social handles, um, because I think at the crux, it actually breaks the social media promise. Um, social media is about people, not about brands. And that's why you're always hearing about these struggles that brands have in growing their presence on social and, and so on and so forth. It's because I don't care what the Coca-Cola Twitter handle has to say. It's not a person. I know it's a group of marketing people behind this curtain. Um, so, I mean, obviously there's exceptions and there are exceptionally well done social media campaigns, but I'm just talking about at the basic premise. And so not only are, not only is social media about people, but like I said, just to kind of tie it back to what we talked earlier today, your company is about people. And again, having that, you know, for me, a software developer Eureka moment where I'm like, oh, this is about people. These are not ones or zeros, but the Eureka moment being social media is about people, companies are about people, if your company is not engaging in looking for people on social media, you're losing out to companies who are doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Well said. Amen. Uh, well, Alan, it has been a real pleasure <laughs> talking with you today. The time has flown by and I want to be respectful of your time. I know you're busy and, and need to go on to, to other things. Uh, so we're going to wrap up, but before we close, I wanted to give you a chance to share with listeners a little bit more about how they can connect with you, with your organization, and anything else you would like to share in, in giving the last word. Yeah, well, I mean, again, like as a special thank you for having me on, on the program, um, I wanted to offer all of your listeners an opportunity to try a program like ours, a platform like ours, out for free for 30 days, uh, which is something we typically don't do. So we created a special uh, promo code for your listeners, HCI30. Um, that allow you to try out our, our system for free, uh, no credit cards, no strings attached to see what it might look like to roll out an enterprise level ERP solution to your team in a, in a kind of organized systemic way that's going to help you succeed. Um, and the way you can kind of take advantage of that is either plug that uh, promo code into our signup flow, or if you want, you can reach out directly to our support team, which is info at socialhp.com. Uh, again, info at socialhp.com. We've got, you can jump on our chat. Um, we're here, we're kind of standing by, ready to help you see if this is a, a great fit for you. Um, and uh, yeah, in terms of me being a resource, feel free to check me out on LinkedIn. Uh, it's linkedin.com forward slash A Bubich, B U B I C H. Um, and happy to answer any questions you might have uh, and talk a little bit deeper about some of the success our clients have had by, you know, turning this into a system um, and answer any other questions you might have that I can hopefully be uh, of assistance with, whether that's SEO, whether that's social media marketing, um, full gambit. I've been doing digital marketing, like I said, for going on a decade plus and happy to be a resource for anyone who needs help. Excellent. Well, thank you, Alan. It's been a real pleasure talking with you. I uh, encourage listeners to reach out, get connected with Alan, find out more about what he and his organization can do for you and check out the free offer. Uh, see if that might be a tool that would be useful to your organization. As always, uh, thank you for joining us. I hope you can stay healthy and safe. I hope you can find meaning and purpose at work each and every day. And I hope you all have a great week. We are excited about the launch of HCI's new magazine, Human Capital Leadership. Human Capital Leadership is a free interactive e-magazine designed to help individuals, leaders, and organizations find innovative approaches to maximize their human capital potential. We will be publishing issues quarterly in August, November, February, and May. Check out the first issue and let us know what you think. Thanks again for joining us for this episode of the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. I hope you stay healthy and safe and that you have a great week.